you guys were <clears throat> able to uh, go through section 6.3 and 6.1 um, yesterday. Um, we're going to be looking at the ambiguous case of law of signs next. And um, I want to kind of note what types of triangles um, each of these cases will have because we'll have an ambiguous case of law of signs and we'll have the law of cosines as well. And so there's a specific set of information that um, will be given for each of these um, triangles um, to know which law to use. And so in this case, we are given uh, an ABC triangle with a side length A, a side length B, and an angle A. So this would be an angle or a side side angle triangle. So SSA for short. And this would be one of the cases where we might see this ambiguous case of the law of signs. So if we're ever given uh, two sides <clears throat> and a single angle, um, then we have an opportunity to work with this ambiguous case of signs. <clears throat> so I'm going to start with a diagram, which is hopefully helpful for a lot of problems here, but especially for this one. <clears throat> so if we start with a known angle, we know the angle A here is equal to 40 degrees. We'll pencil that in here. We also know that ang uh, side length A is 54, so that would be the opposite side is 54 centimeters. And we know a fixed side B is 62. So, um, we know that we have here a pair of sides and angles. So that would be side length 54 and angle of 40 degrees. So we certainly can set up a law of signs to figure out the angle B to start out with. And so down here, we'll call this angle B on our triangle. And I'm gonna be kind of looking at this big triangle right here. <clears throat> So if we considered the law of sines first, just for solving for that single angle, we know that in, we have A over the sine of angle A is equal to B over the sine of angle B. So we have three components that are known, and we'd like to go out and solve for that um, B, capital B angle. So let's fill in the details here, and then we'll uh, walk through the process of, of solving the rest. And actually, in this case, it might even be helpful. Uh, we'll, we'll do it on the next one, but this is fine. We'll have 54 over sine of A is sine of 40 degrees. And then we'll have side length B, which is 62 over sine of B. Okay, so this is looking good so far. So what would be one way I could go from here to solve for the angle B? Okay, we could use cross multiplication. Yep, that would be a great idea to start. So if I did cross multiplication here, we could say that 62 sine of 40 degrees is equal to 54 and then sine of angle B. And it looks like we can solve for at least sine of B by dividing by 54. So we can divide by 54. And now if I wanted to, to get just angle B by itself, what operation would I have to use next?
I have sine of B is equal to some constant. What operation would come next? Yeah, I think I, I'm going to use the inverse sine function, right? So here we could list this out as angle B can be equal to the sine inverse of, well, we can just use everything on the left side. That's 62 sine of 40 divided by 54. And we can put all that into our calculator into that sine inverse function. So that will be uh, that angle B out there. So take a moment to solve this one and let's just uh, go ahead and round to the nearest 10th of a degree. So we'll round to the nearest 10th of a degree for side link or the uh, angle B. So I'll give you a moment to do that. If you find that angle B, go ahead and place that in the chat, if you will. And we'll just, again, round to the nearest tenth. We'll be a little more specific that way. Okay, awesome. Got some answers there in the chat. Looking good. Yep, 47.6 looks like a great solution for this one. So we have 47.6 degrees. And in our picture here, notice that this is going to be the angle set right here. 47.6 degrees. So I solve for uh, side or angle B here. Um, one thing to be careful with, though, is in this case, there's actually two possible triangles involved here because we are only given one angle and two sides. So there's really two um, triangles that are available, and the second triangle is made by swinging this A side or this a link into the existing triangle and creating a new obtuse triangle um, and I'll highlight that triangle here in blue so if you notice here we can highlight this obtuse triangle that's created by kind of swinging that a side into the triangle and there's actually a second triangle available to us. The way we can find that second triangle is by considering um, this little swinging triangle here on the other side um, to have a um, isosceles triangle here. So these two will have equal measure right here meaning that there's going to be really a second B angle and usually we just call that B prime so we can call a second B angle and we'll call that B prime that's sitting right here um, this angle is available to us and it happens to be just the complement or sorry excuse me the supplement of the original angle that we just solved so if I was to solve for B prime here, the second B angle that's possible in this triangle configuration, um, what would be that B prime if we were going to take the supplement of the original B angle? A supplement of that B angle. Yep, Aiden, that's really close. We uh, just use that decimal. Yeah, that would be, yep, 132.4. So this is really a second angle, which is going to create a second triangle there in the highlighted blue, 
highlighted blue section. So now we can make kind of uh, two lists, um, one with the large triangle and one with the smaller triangle with that uh, B prime angle. And that's what we're gonna go through next. Um, I'll pause here just with the picture here and, and see if you guys have any questions so far. Yes, Professor, I have one question. How did you, um, can you explain one more time how you got the blue uh, supplement angle of B prime, the 47.6? Yeah, yeah, so when we swing this um, same side, so notice that this uh, dotted line that we did here in blue, kind of coming down this way right here, that's the same side length A that's swinging down, because A is a constant. A is something we know from the problem statement. So the side length actually doesn't change. And so since these two side lengths are equal, that means that their course angles have to be equal. Oh, uh, that makes sense, thank you. Yep. Okay, so there's a couple more things that we're going to be wanting to find here. And so let's just um, write out information that we have so far in two sections. And we found that angle of B prime by just taking the supplement. So this would be um, really B prime is equal to 180 minus 47.6. So we found the supplement because there's a straight angle formed on the bottom of the triangle there. Let's um, kind of put into kind of two columns what we have so far. So we have A is constant, that's 54. We have a B side that's constant, 62. And then we need to go out and solve for our C side. And then we have angle A is for, we have angle B, the original angle B was 47.6. And then we have to go out and find a C angle. So that's the big triangle. We'll call it triangle one. And then a second triangle we can go out and find is triangle two. Same A side, that's a constant. Same B side. And then the C side we're gonna call little C prime. That's what we'll find for that last C side. And then we want to go out and solve A is still 40 on that other triangle. We know B prime, the angle B prime is 132.4. That's what we just solved for. And we're going to actually go out and find another C prime angle for that triangle. So there's a couple more components that we need to solve for on each of those triangles. So let's um, highlight the first triangle here. The first triangle that we're going to be working with in blue, um, this side link C that we're going to be highlighting is the whole length off the base of this triangle. We consider that whole length of the base, that's side length C. And so that would make this whole big angle C on the top uh, angle C. And so those are the two components we're gonna solve for next. Is there any questions with where we're headed with triangle one? So it's the large triangle encompassing everything. So to solve for um, this angle 
and side length, we're just going to set up um, another law of cosines. But first, what we can consider here is that this is a triangle, and so therefore, these angles have to add up to 180. So I can consider that angle um, C plus 40. 47.6 all have to add up to 180. So let's take a moment to solve for uh, angle C here. If we add up those known angles and subtract from 180, what do we find for angle C? 92.4 Mr. Program. 92.4? Yes, sir. Awesome. So we've got 92.4 for our, our last angle, which is great. Now we can go out and use that law of sines to solve for our last side length. So let's go out and do that. We're going to use the A ratio to help us out in that. So we'll do uh, 54 over sine of 40 again, equal to, we'll have side length C over sine of 92.4. So another law of sines to work out the last side length. And if we have the side length in the numerator, that's kind of the the most helpful place for that variable to be, because now we can just multiply by sine of 92.4 on both sides. And those will cancel out to give us just the C side. So let's take a moment again and just place this side into your calculator. This is gonna be the side length C. You can do that. Um, it might be helpful to put that 54 in the front when you do the calculation so it doesn't get confused inside the angle. Again, we should be in degrees for our calculator because all of these calculations will be in degrees. Mr. Kogan, I got 83.9. 83.9. So 84, I guess. Unless okay. I put it into the calculator wrong. Yep. I, think, I think you're okay. Do we have confirmation on that? 83.9 look good to anyone else? Everyone got the same thing. Yep. All right. Excellent. I think that would be correct. Well, there. So we'll we'll place that in eighty three point nine, and there is our first angle. So we've got our first angle worked out. Now we can go out and uh, solve for the second triangle. So just visually, what we're going to be here, let me jot that down as well. Let me just leave that for just a minute so everybody can jot those pieces down. So the last couple items that we need to solve for for triangle two is going to be the um, C prime angle inside. So let's take a little bit of a look at what that represents in the triangle. So the C prime side first is the side going this small distance over here. So that's your C prime side. And then your C prime angle is right here in purple. So we can expect these two side lengths and sides to be a quite a bit smaller than the original C.
So if we're going to, to add the 180 for those angles, what will be our C prime angle? We have a 40 degree angle and a 132.4. With addition of these two here, trying to find what would add to this to make 180. Oh, I got uh, 7.6. Yep, 7.6 will do it. Very good. We'll have 76 for that other angle. Again, I didn't draw this perfectly, but you know, we can consider that as a pretty small angle, C prime. And then let's see, the last thing is solving for that side length. So we know that's also going to be a small side length. Set up that same ratio. We have B4 sine of 40, and then C prime. Sine of 7.6. So, last law of sines to get done. Again, we can multiply both sides by the sine of And go ahead and take a moment to do that as well. Grab and collect the terms on the left side to find C prime. I'm sorry, I, got, I uh, forgot. 11. Go ahead. I was going to say, I got 11 as a C prime, Mr. Program. 11? Okay. Any decimal on that? Uh, point, just point one one. so I guess 11.11. .11. Okay. 11.1, we'll call it. That's in centimeters. Perfect. So I forgot my apologies. Um, so we put sin, I mean, sorry, arc sin 54 divided by sin 40. Sorry. Um, we don't, so in this case, we don't need the um, arc sine. So we're not taking any inverses in this problem here. So the only time we needed to take the inverse was up here when we were solving for an angle up here. But within this, uh, when we're solving for a side length, we don't have to take the uh, sine inverse. We just use the regular sine function. Okay, so like 54 divided by sin 40 degrees. Right, and then we want to multiply by sine of 7.6 to get the C. All right, yeah, got the, I got the same answer. Okay. Okay, great. All right, so 11.1 .1 is that final piece, and that is our triangle two. So we would wrap that up. That would be our second triangle possible. And that would complete this problem here. So there's two cases in this ambiguous case of sines. Again, this comes when we have two side lengths and one angle. So it's a bit of work here, but again, the, it's really the same process in both triangles. So if you know the process to get it one side, you're just going to repeat that with just different numbers on triangle two. So usually it is pretty helpful here to uh, get a nice little diagram going um, to relay um, the values into a picture. And that seems to, to help a lot of folks as we get uh, started learning this. So. Is there any questions that I can answer regarding the, the first problem here? We'll try to walk through maybe one more as well. 
but is there any questions before we do another example? All right, well, we'll try another example here and. Again, we'll try to notice uh, a few features of the information that they give us and then try to work out a diagram. So. Um, we want to find the missing uh, parts of the triangle ABC. If we have an angle a. We have a side length B and a side length a. So, let's take a look at that again. We also have again here a side side angle so we can work with this ambiguous case of signs so this will either come out as two solutions or no solutions possibly but a lot of times we will have two triangles here so let's set up what we know so far we know side length a is fixed so that is 60. We know side length B is fixed, so that'll be a fixed side. That won't change. And we know side length A is also fixed. We'll call that 7.1. So this is side length or uh, angle B over here. And this will be called angle C. I'm going to get rid of this for just a moment. Just to look at the overall triangle here. Okay, so what would be the uh, first thing that we'd want to consider when solving for another side or angle? What's our first move? Mm -hmm. Yep, we could go for uh, angle B, right? So if I want to go for angle B, and this is something I didn't do in the last one, is we can kind of rearrange the law of signs a little bit um, to be more helpful to solve for an angle. So I could say that um, that the sine of angle A, that's 65, the sine of, sine of A, divided by 7.1 is going to be equal to sine of B divided by side length B. So notice that just putting this sine of B inside the uh, numerator is actually going to help the, the process just a little bit um, in terms of the algebra that we use. So we still can consider, uh, you know, either Cross multiplication, or we could just take the approach of just multiplying both sides by 7.6, and that will free up sine of B. So, again, just to remind your, um, us that the law of sines, we can kind of take the reciprocal of the law of sines ratios, and we'd still have a true ratio. Um, for those side lengths and angles. So multiplying that 7.6 on both sides, we can get rid of and cancel on the right. And now we're just left with the uh, sine of B equal to some constant. Um, what would be the operation we'd need to use to solve for angle B? Right, yep. so we can use the uh, sine inverse. So here's the, the case where we need a sine inverse because we're trying to solve for an angle. So just as a reminder, we use inverses, inverse function, when solving for an angle.
All right, so we'll do our sine inverse. And this will give us one solution. And go ahead and try this out. And again, let's uh, maybe round to one decimal. And in this case, we, it might just round up here. You've got one answer at 76 degrees. You get that same solution. You can give a thumbs up that you agree. 76 degrees. Awesome job. Sweet. So I think uh, rounding up to 76 is appropriate here. So 76 degrees is angle B. Um, now, again, this has a possibility for a second triangle. If we do this diagram and swing this A side over, again, it's going to have kind of a similar shape. If that's that same A side length, um, again, we're going to have equal angle here and here. In this inner portion of our triangle, we'll have a 76 degree angle, meaning that there's going to be, again, a second triangle formed right here with a, another angle. And again, we'll call that angle B prime. So in this case, what would we call that B prime angle? What's the measure of that interior angle that's in purple? Mm -hmm. Yep, that is a 104 degree angle. That's approximately 104. Excellent. And so now that kind of builds our building blocks for our two triangles, and now we're off to the races again. So again, let me pause here and see, is there any questions with how we've progressed so far, how we've uh, divided into these two triangles? And kind of one tip um, as you're going through these problems, as long as this side length or this initial angle that you solve for is an acute angle, meaning that it's between zero and nine degrees, um, you will have a second triangle to draw out. So as long as that initial angle that you solve for in the side side angle case is acute, um, you'll have a second uh, triangle to work with. So again, I kind of like to draw out each of those triangles. Triangle one first. And then just list all our known values. So this is our first uh, triangle without the primes. So we are searching for um, another side length and another angle in that triangle. So we can tackle this one first. I don't know if I've left enough space here, so let me see if I can maneuver that. Up just a no. 
it's not going to really be helpful. We'll just work with it where it's. All right, so what would be the first thing I need to do to solve the rest of this first triangle? The idea is to start. <clears throat> which which C am I going to? Try to solve for first the angle or the side. Mm -hmm. And how would I go about solving for that angle? Yeah, so we need to make sure that these angles add to 180. So we take 180 and subtract both of these angles from 180 and find the missing piece. Uh, what is the length or the measure of the angle of C after we add to 180? Um, I think it might be a little bigger than 12. I think if we add both of these two angles, we have uh, 41. Yep. And so we'll have a 39 degree angle to finish it out. That looks good. 39 degree angle. And then we're going to go for one last uh, law of sines here to finish this triangle out. So you've got the law of sines of 7.1 over sine of 65. Um, I, I do want to note here that we, I'm always going to be starting these laws of sines with a known angle inside that was given at the beginning of the problem. Um, kind of as a rule of thumb, that's the best way to go about it. So we're not uh, making unnecessary roundings in our problems. So we'll, we'll take that um, A ratio every time since it was given. And so we'll have side length C and sine of 39 degrees. All right, go ahead and take a moment um, and use any cross multiplication or um, work here to solve for side length C. I'll give you guys a moment to to work this one out if it's great. So try that one out on your own here. Right. Aiden, you got a solution there. Looks good. All right. So, what would be my first um, operation to go out and solve for side link C here? Anyone want to offer the, the first step?
if you're willing to speak into the mic, that would be helpful as well. Right, we can multiply by the sign of 39. A couple of you guys have that in the chat. Nice work. Um, Sam and Anya. All right, so if we're going to multiply by that sign. We can do so here. And so our side link C, we're going to, again, here going to um, just be equal to that left side. No need for inverse functions here. So if I just take that left side of the equation, that's going to be a constant here for side link C. And in fact, that will be approximately 4.9. So 4.9 is going to be our side link C. So that will be our, our triangle one, all done. These values. And then we'll just go and try to do that same operation uh, again for triangle two. So we'll list out the same A, same B. We don't know the C prime, we know angle A, we know angle B prime, it's the 104 that we solved for on the interior in purple, and we don't know a C prime angle. So again, the angles that we're going to be solving for here, the C prime angle is right here. And then our C side, C prime, is going to be this length, right? So those are the values we're headed after here. Let's see. And if we're going to go for the angle first, I think, Anya, you have that again in the, the chat there. So we have a 11 degrees for the angles. We, again, want to add to 180 for those triangle angles. That would be 11 degrees for C prime. That looks good. And then last but not least, we'll go solve for a little C prime. So 7.1, sine of 65, then C prime, sign of 11 degrees. So make sure that we use the C prime angle when we're solving for the C prime side. So we want to continue to use the right angles and sides for the ratio. And then in a similar fashion, really just using the same operations, multiply by the sine of 11. And if we put that left side into our calculator to, to find a C prime, again, I'm just going to take all of that stuff on the left side to find our C prime side to finish it off. What do we find for, for that calculation? Excellent. Yep. Sweet. 1.5. That'll be correct. Yep. A 1.5, we put all that in our calculator. So notice that I um, haven't kind of talked through this, but this is a good chance before we take a quick break. Um, notice that the largest angles associate with the largest sides, and the smallest angle associates with the smallest side. So you can see. In this triangle that we just worked out, the side length C and angle C are the smallest. 
and the largest would be sine length B and angle B prime. So because of the law of sines, we know the sides and angles of a triangle will have uh, will be in ratio with each other. So that's going to be highlighted in our results as well. Okay. Is there any questions over this ambiguous case of signs? That'll be so that second example that we just worked through. Any questions that you guys like to talk about? All right, so this looks like a, a good time for a break. So we'll take five minutes here, let you guys stretch out and uh, we'll come back with the next section. So we'll come on back at about 8.55 and we'll start with the law of cosines.
All right, welcome back everyone. If you guys are uh, back with us, go ahead and give me a thumbs up and we will get started with section 7.3. Excellent. Good to have you guys back. All right, so the law of cosines is the next topic that we will cover here. And as you can see uh, with the formulas for the law of cosines, it's really similar to the Pythagorean theorem, but there is a little bit of a, an adjustment on the end of the formula. So, um, usually the Pythagorean theorem for right triangles, we would consider as just a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Well, in this case, the law of cosines really is a Pythagorean theorem for what we'll call oblique triangles, which is just meaning non-right triangles. So, this chapter is all about non-right triangles, and so that's what we're going to be looking at here. So the law of cosines is especially helpful when we have a angle um, side side or a side 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 triangle. So those are the, the two cases where we'll try to work with the law of sines. So angle side side or a side side side. All right, and actually, let me rephrase that. Well, really the angle side side would be a side angle side where we don't have any matching sides or angles. So that would be a side angle side here. We'll call that side angle side. SAS or um, all three sides known, but no angles. So those are the two types of triangles that we'll be working with in section 7.3. So we'll do an example where we have kind of both arrangements. So the first arrangement we'll have in a question, uh, the first question in the section is we want to find the missing parts of triangle ABC if we have one angle A there we go angle a we have one side length b and side length c so notice that we do not have a pair of angle and side together so we have a side angle side case right here so looking to what we have so far the first formula here would be a great one to use because we can utilize our angle a and our side length B and C on the right side of that equation to solve for side length A. So that would be our first step, um, law of cosines. So let's set the equation up here with what we have. We know that the side length A squared, don't want to forget those squareds, is equal to B squared. And so our, for us, B squared is 20 squared plus c squared is 30 squared, and then we'll have minus 2 times b times c. And then we'll do the cosine of the angle 60. OK, so in this case, the uh, computation is not super difficult because we have just one variable and it's isolated on one side of the equation. So this case um, doesn't um, uh, take a, t a lot of effort um, after at least the initial setup. So let's consider now um, if they evaluated the right side of that equation, give you guys a moment to put that into your calculator. So make sure that you have the the squareds on the first two items, and then there's no squaring on the last item with the cosine. Give you guys a moment to find that right side.
and be careful to put a minus sign in that last term as well. I don't know if I put it wrong in the calculator, but I got 700. Mm -hmm. I think that should be your correct solution there. 700 would look good to me. I think that's what I got as well. So you can double check your solution. I think we should end up getting 700 or a squared. Will the, will the XYZ homework take either? Well, 700, 700 is not the correct answer for A yet. Notice that we still have an A squared. So we will have to take a square root uh, for the final solution. Gotcha. For A. <clears throat> so if we take a square root of 700 here to get A, and again, we'll just take the positive root for 700. Um, and we'll, let's just round to maybe one decimal here. I got 27. For uh, rounding to one decimal on this one, 26, actually. 26.5, maybe? It's 26.45. I'm not sure if this is a round unless it's over five. Yep. So, yeah, if it's five or over, we'll round. So, we'll, we'll call that 26.5. And again, we'll take the positive square root again, just to take that square root. We're going to take that and get 26.5. And for the law of cosines, the good thing about law of cosines is there's no ambiguous case. So there's only one triangle that's possible in this law of cosines setup. So we don't have to worry about searching for another triangle that's possible. So, with this, we have now a side length A. So, let's consider now what we have. A side length A, we have the angle A, side length B, side length C. We have two more things to solve for. So, how can I go out and solve for my next component of the triangle? And just consider the methods that we've used so far in this chapter. We need to solve for angle B and angle C. Yep, Anya, you're right we can think about just the law of sines, right? So we just use the law of cosines here. And so next we can actually look at the law of sines to get our next angle. If I look at the pair here, I can say that um, angle A sine of A over A is equal to sine of B over little b. I now have a pair angle A and side length A. So we can set up the law of sines for that second angle. So let's do it here. We have sine of A is 6 over, we'll call 26.5 our side length. And then we'll have sine of B that's known, and then side length B is 20. So notice here that we're going to be solving for an angle, so ultimately we're going to want to consider a inverse function when we're done. So what would be the first operation I could go um, to to solve for angle B? Mm-hmm. You can multiply both sides by 20. And 
And then what would be our last operation here? Yep, now is the time we can use that sign in. So we, we can state that the angle B is going to be equal to the sine inverse. Notice that we're using a sine function here. So it'll be another sine inverse. And we can take that of 20 sine of 60 and divide by 26.5. And ultimately, here we'll have a, an approximation to the answer, just like this. There's really an approximation here. So let's put that into our calculator with our sine inverse. We'll do an approximation to one decimal for the angle. And once you find your result, pull it in the chat or share it over the mic. Mm -hmm. Yep, getting a couple of solutions there. Awesome. Aiden, Sam, and Anya. So 40.8 looks pretty good. 40.8 degrees. All right, excellent. Now, since I have a second angle, the only thing I need to go out and solve for next is angle C. So if I need to find angle C, what is one method I could use to solve for angle C. I have all other five, the other five components, just searching for another angle. We find G prime. Uh, so I don't necessarily need, I don't need another triangle because there's not gonna be any, uh, prime triangles, just on tr the, the only triangle there. I have a, I have angle B, and so what needs to be true about angle C because of that? Okay, yep, so if I add those two known angles together, it looks like we've got 100.8. So that plus C has to get 180. Yep, that would be right. So if I take the sum of those two known angles, subtract 180, looks like I'll get 70.2. So we're simply doing a sum and difference there. So 72 point, or 79.2. And again, this is just gonna be an approximation. So, because again, these are based off of roundings. So to kind of summarize this problem here, there's three items that we need to solve for. We solve for the first side length with the law of cosines, second with the law of sines, and then the third component is just add the angles to 180. So as we get going, um, I think the each step gets easier and easier. Law of cosines is a little bit more work. 
law of sines is a ratio that we're familiar with. And then just solving for that last angle is just using the property of a triangle to add to 180. So we have all of our components here. And that would be the, the end of that problem. Is there any questions I can answer regarding the law of cosines in this first case? All right, so let's take a look at a, a second case of the law of cosines. Um, as I said before, we just looked at the case of a side angle side. The next case would be a side 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 triangle. So let's consider this side side, side triangle. We are given a triangle ABC um, and we would like to solve for the unknown sides or the unknown um, angles in this case, where we have side length A, side length B, and side length C. So just to give a diagram here, look, that might be helpful. So we have some diagram here, we'll call this side length A. 34, B is 20, and then our C is equal to 18. Okay, so when we're um, having a side, side, side triangle, again, the law of cosines can be really helpful. And um, whenever we're tasked with a uh, side, side, side triangle, it's um, best to solve for the longest angle first. That way um, we won't kind of run into problems in terms of the cosine function itself. So if we solve for that largest angle first, that's the, the way that we'd like to, to work these problems. So in this case, what would be the largest angle that we'd be solving for? It's going to be the, the large the bottom one uh the uh adjacent um so it would be well yeah it would be the one opposite our largest side length so which which angle would that be the angle a yep angle a yep so angle a is going to be our largest um angle because it associates with the largest side length. My bad. I thought we were talking about. It's all good. So in that case, we're going to be using really the first equation there that involves angle A. So we'll be using that highlighted equation one more time. So we'll have A squared equal to b squared plus c squared minus 2 bc times the cosine of a. So very similar to the Pythagorean theorem, except the last little bit, that's in addition. So now we're going to actually go solve for an angle um, with this formula. So it's going to look a little bit different. So let's start with um, inputting the values that we know. So we have 34, we have 20, and we have 18, minus 2, 20, 18, and then cosine of A. All right, 
So let's kind of walk through this uh, one kind of term at a time. If we do 34 squared, what do we find there? We'll just kind of walk through left to right here. 34 squared, 11, 56, excellent. Then 20 squared, we get 400 plus. We know our squareds, this is not too difficult. 18 squared, yep, it's 324. And then we'll have a constant on this last bit that's going to be negative. We have 2 times 20 times 18. And that will end up being, yep, correct, 720. So 720 there. So if we can continue this, we can add some constants on the right side. That would be fairly thorough. 724 minus 720 cosine A. We can search from both sides with 724. And when we subtract that on the left side, what do we end up getting for a, a total there in the left? Eleven fifty six minus seven twenty four. Yep, is four hundred and thirty two. And then looks like we can divide by a constant before we uh, take a look at that cosine. So we will divide by negative 720. All right, so if we finish up with this, uh, what would be the operation that we need to go out and solve for A? We have cosine of A is equal to this ratio. Yep, a cosine inverse would be really helpful here. So we could say that A is going to be equal to the cosine inverse this time. And we can really just put this ratio in. We don't have to reduce this at all. Um, we could just put it right into that cosine inverse. There's no problem with that. Um, so 432 divided by 720, or negative 720. And if we put that uh, cosine inverse into our calculators, take a moment to find that. And you can put your solution in the chat or share it with others audibly. Okay, awesome. It looks like you guys are grabbing the right value. So 126.9. degrees. Looks great. So we now have side or uh, angle A. So let's now consider um, what we'd need to go out and get next. If we have angle A, that's 126.9. What's the next component that we could go out and solve for?
Yep, we could go for angle B. And how would we go out to get angle B? What method could we use, Aiden? Uh, we could set it up with the law of sines. Yeah, correct. Awesome job. Yep, law of sines would be probably the quickest way to that. So let's do it. So we're going to do, I'll do it on the left side here with some more space. Sine of A, or sorry, sine of B, we'll do that. Um, and we'll have side length B equal to, we do know the, the A ratio now, so that would be sine of 126.9 over angle or a side length A is 34. We'll use that. On that left side. So as we set it up like this with the sine of B in the numerator, we can simply uh, multiply by T on both sides. to uh, get sine B by itself. And then we're off to the races with an inverse function again. In this case, notice that we're using the sine function. So we want a sine inverse. So B would be equal to the sine inverse. Go ahead and try that one out. And we'll get an approximation for the angle B. All right, excellent. Getting some 28.1s. And I encourage you guys, if you have a calculator on hand, Try to punch these in and get confirmation here. Another moment to uh, try to put that in. Want to make sure you guys are confident working with these inverse functions. So this sine inverse, I think, should give us uh, that twenty-eight point one. So. We'll go with that, 28.1 degrees. So here we have angle B. So we have two angles known to us, angle B and angle C, or angle A. So now we're just searching for that last angle. So C, And we can notice that angle C, since it's only the last angle here, the way we go out and solve for that is we can just say what is 180 minus sum of our genome angles. Try to squeeze this in 126.9. We do that. Uh, we should find our result for angle C. Make sure it adds up to 180. So if we subtract those angles from 180, what, what do we end up finding for angle C? I got the same. Yep. 25. I think this will be 25 even for us, the way we've rounded down. So 25 degrees will work. And that will be all the angles from that side, side, side triangle.
Excellent job. So just another case of the side, side, side triangle using the law of cosines. So that angle of 25 degrees and angle of 28.1. Is there any questions you can answer with the procedure for this type of problem? Okay. All right, we are down to the last section for chapter seven, which is some um, Area of the triangle problems of again some non weight triangles. So there's going to be a few um, specific ways um, we're going to be finding areas of triangles for uh, different um, angle side combinations. So the first case we're going to consider, I'll highlight here, is we're starting the area of a triangle that has a side angle side arrangement. So that would be one angle and the adjacent two sides. So we have one angle um, known to us and we're given two adjacent sides. So if we are um, working with this type of triangle, side, angle, side, um, there is a kind of a breakdown of kind of how we derive this formula, but we can kind of just take a look at the results for, for this class and consider there's really three different formulas we could have. Area. And depending on what sides we are given, if we're given uh, an angle A, and side length BC, we could have an uh, area one half B times C times sine of A. Um, or we could have just an arrangement that's similar to that, um, but just rearranging the terms with the use of um, either angle C or angle B. So again, this is a uh, way we can, for the area of a triangle, if we just know two sides and one angle. So you can uh, use any angle in that area formula? Right, yeah. So depending on what um, angle they give you in that arrangement, um, it yeah, you can use uh, any of those three um, work. So it's just like the law of cosines where the law of cosines could be rearranged in three different ways. It's really the same idea. So depending on what side length and um, angle you're given, you can rearrange the, the equation with A, B, and Cs. Got it. It's just based off what information you have. Okay. Right. But they're, they're really the same full formula. They're just with um, the different side lengths. So let's consider maybe the uh, first one here. Uh, we want to find the area of a triangle ABC if we know side length A, side length C, and angle B. So this would be a nice first case triangle with a side angle side arrangement. And um, in this case, we'd want to look at that last formula because we do know angle B and we know side length A and um, C. So we can say that the area of that triangle is just going to be one half times A times C. And then we would go with the sine of angle B. So 
So if we take those um, all together as a product, go ahead and take a moment to, to jot that into our calculators to uh, get a final solution. Got a couple of solutions there. Those are looking good. So 458.3. Here, this would be in meters squared because we're doing area here. So the dimensions are in meters, so the area would be meters squared. And that would be all for that problem. That's kind of our first case side angle side um a second case that we have involves a angle side angle so just to get a, a second case um, this is really derived with the law of sines. Um, we're not going to go through the derivation for this one either, but we do want to just take the uh, formulas as they are. So this would, again, has three arrangements. So if we know a angle side angle, we really know all three angles. So if we know two, we know all uh, three angles. and one side. So let's see if we can uh, use one of these arrangements for a angle side angle setup. Um, the next question has finding the area of a triangle ABC if angle A is 42, side length B is 14, and we have a angle C of 75. So if I wanted to consider using one of these formulas, I do need to know all of the angles. And so how would I go out and solve for angle B and what would that have to be in this case? Mm -hmm. Right. Yep, so we could take 180, subtract the known angles. That would be 42 plus 75. That would give us the uh, angle B, since everything has to add up to 180. And I think that would be right. So Kevin, you got it. So 63 degrees for that third angle. Okay, so now we have A, B, C, and we have side length B. So um, looks like only one of these formulas is going to be necessarily help helpful for us, and that would be the second one. So that works with side length B. So let's set up the area here. So we have a B squared. then sine of 42, we'll have sine of angle C, and then the sine of angle B, 63 in the denominator. So we have all signs in this one. This is derived off of the law of signs. So there's only functions in this case too. All right, so go ahead and try uh, evaluating this in our calculator. Make 
we have the, the two and the sine of 63, um, all in the denominator there. Take a moment to evaluate that, and I will double check the work on this one as well. And any other solutions? Got a couple at 56.4, 71.1. Which way are we going to go here? I think if we have the order of operations um, correct in this one, I think we'll, we should end up with 71.1. Um, if we do the numerator and then uh, divide by the denominator with the parentheses around it, I think you'll find that um, with 2 and sine of 63 in the denominator, we'll get the 71.1 uh, as the area. And that'll be, again, meters squared in this one. Any questions from uh, this case two and what we're looking at? Okay, right, so last case that we'll take a look at, and then we'll probably do a, a live problem here to work out at least another example. Case two is a side, side, side case. So this is probably one of the more interesting um, cases um, because we only have side lengths. We don't have any angles. So there's really two components to this solving process. Um, one is the overall formula, and then we have a um, variable S that is called the um, half of the perimeter, which is called a semi-perimeter. That's why they use the um, letter S. And so this S is equal to half, again, of the perimeter of the triangle. And then taking the area to be the square root of S times S minus A, S minus B, and S minus C. So there's a couple calculations to make. Um, for this type. So let's consider uh, the values we have A is 12, B is 14, and C in this case is 8 meters. So I guess I fell in love with the dimensions of meters and used them for all the problems here, but you'll probably see <laughs> inches and feet and other dimensions as well. So let's first uh, go out and find that S um, semi-perimeter, which is half of the perimeter. So that would be S. S is equal to one half of the sum of 12 plus 14 plus eight. We do that. Um, what do we find for that semi-perimeter? One half of 12 plus 14 plus eight. We got one solution there. 17, do we agree with that one? Okay. 
to be one half of 34. And that, in fact, is 17. So we'll take 17 as that semi perimeter S. And now we can go right to the area formula. So area is going to be equal to, for this triangle, we'll start with the square root of that S, that's 17, times 17 minus all of my sides. So that's going to be 12, 17 minus 14, and 17 minus 8. So you can definitely uh, put this into your calculator right away. Um, another option is to just break down the square a little bit to a product of a few numbers. Uh, either way you do it, you'll be in good shape. And if we take that product in a square root, uh, looks like we got some answers there in the chat again. Uh, 47.9 is the common answer there. Anyone else want to confirm that? Or if you guys found an, another solution, anything else? 47.9 is the majority, at least in the chat. And I think that one would be correct as is. So 47.9, and then that's again meters squared. So didn't really explore working with other dimensions there, but uh, the mathematics behind it is the same, regardless if it's inches, meters, feet, miles, whatever you want to put on that. We like that. All right, so that is uh, the wrap up for chapter seven. So we have kind of those three triangle area methods. We work with the law of cosines and with the law of sines. So kind of uh, three big topics in that chapter. Again, law of sines was first. Then we have law cosines, then triangle or area of triangles.